So I have a, a vibration problem from the engine, which is a Ford Duratec HE 2 liter petrol uh, in this car. A uh, common fault which causes vibration is the uh, lower torque restrictor uh, bushed linkage, uh, which commonly fails. Um, I have already replaced that and I did a uh, separate video about that, uh, but it has not uh, solved my vibration problems. So in this video, I am going to replace both upper engine mounts and I'm fairly sure that that's going to solve the vibration. I think that it is the right hand mount that has failed. I have diagnosed that by um, jacking the engine on the right hand side up by about half an inch just using a floor jack and that seems to make the vibration go away so that is a uh, safe enough bet to replace that mount and since I'm replacing one mount then it is always better to replace these things in pairs so I'm just going to bite the bullet and go ahead and replace the other one as well. So to do this job I have jacked the car up a few inches, it doesn't need to be up very high but I did need to lift it a little bit in order to be able to get a floor jack underneath the engine which is going to be necessary because we have to support it and uh, taking some weight off the car's suspension will also make the job a little bit easier because it makes the, um, the, the front of the car a bit more rigid. So I'm going to do the right hand mount first, that's the one that I think is the problem. In order to get access to that, we need to uh, remove this coolant expansion tank. We don't need to remove it completely, but we need to uh, unbolt it and just shift it out of position. You can see that this bolt here is one of the engine mount bolts and we can't get at it because it's uh, covered by the tank. So the uh, bolts that the tank uses are 10 millimeter and there are two of them on the tank itself. Uh, you really need a, quite a small uh, 3 8 inch uh, ratchet handle is ideal. That's what I'm using here. Anything bigger than that, you might have trouble getting it into position. And once you've got those bolts undone, there is another bolt on uh, holding one of the hoses down um, a little bit um, farther in front of the tank, uh, which is a, you need to remove that too in order to um, free the hose up and allow you to pull the tank out and to position it somewhere out of the way. Now, then the next thing that we want to do is to uh, lift or support the weight of the engine so that we can actually remove the mount without the, without the engine then, you know, promptly falling through the car. So to do that, I'm going to use this manual uh, floor jack. This is just the uh, spare wheel, you know, jack that comes with the uh, back of the car. Uh, the reason I'm not going to use a hydraulic jack to do this is because um, a hydraulic jack can lose its uh, pressure over time um, and therefore lower the thing that it's supporting, whereas this will allow me to lift the engine to an exact uh, level and then leave it there with uh, some degree of reliability. We want to lift it from as far over toward the uh, side of the jet, the mount as possible. And we're just going to lift it about 10 millimeters. Make sure that wood's nice and secure. Okay, and now the uh, weight of the engine is off the mount, which means that we should be able to uh, undo the bolt safely and remove the mount. Now, before we go any further, we need to make sure we have the correct uh, socket types. Um, the ones here on the outside, uh, where the bolts mount to the um, engine bay body, are uh, 15 millimeter heads. Uh, the ones on the uh, engine itself are 18 millimeters, and the uh, those ones, the 18 millimeter ones, you need a um, deep socket uh, because they are nuts on a uh, threaded rod rather than a bolt head. So a regular socket will not um, reach the nut. And of course, you need a decent sized breaker bar. This is a, a half inch set. You do not use anything smaller. Um, and uh, even this handle here, I, it's not really long enough. I had trouble with it, so a, um, a cheap bar would be a um, good idea as well. So I'm going to go around and crack loose all of the bolts in question before actually removing them all, just to check that none of them are seized completely solid and that we can actually uh, get them out properly. Um, especially the bigger ones, they require a lot of force. You will be putting some uh, muscle into this. Uh, make sure that you hold the extension bar and the socket all true to the bolt. Uh, don't let it get on too much of an angle. You, know, you will end up damaging the bolt heads if you're not careful. 
And uh, just before proceeding any further, what you see me doing here is I'm using an, uh, a marker pen to just trace the outline of the base of the engine mount, where it goes, where, where the old one went, so that I can reposition the new mount in um, as close to the old position as possible. And then I'm going to loosen all of the bolts and the nuts uh, pretty much as far as possible until they're uh, nearly off their threads, but not completely off the threads. And then I'm just going to get under the car and just uh, check visually uh, the jack where we've supported the engine and just make sure that that is all looking safe, that nothing has slipped just because the uh, next step is going to be relying on that obviously once we take the uh, engine mount out then um, we need to know that that jack is safe okay that's now loose so we just want to check that this is all looking secure um, by the way I'm comfortable doing this because um, the nuts are still on the thread so that even if this fell what would happen is the engine would fall onto the nuts it wouldn't fall completely out of the car so it would be um, safe enough so now that we know it's safe we can uh, undo these nuts now when you go doing this you putting your fingers near something that might fall um, don't put your fingers underneath the nuts because obviously that's the bit that's going to get trapped um, if something happens, so uh, just be aware of where you go putting your fingers. So there are the two nuts off the uh, engine side of the mount, and that engine is now free to fall if it were not being supported. So we're going to work quickly and uh, remove the uh, three bolts remaining, and then um, pull out the old mount. And uh, once I have this one out, once I look at the underside of it, you can see this crack here around the perimeter of the rubber is indicative of a problem. So um, if we compare the old mount to the new mount, we can immediately see um, more of this issue. You can see how the old mount is uh, much more compressed down than the new one is. Now these mounts in particular, this right hand side one, is actually hydraulic. There is fluid in there, or there's supposed to be fluid inside the rubber. And of course, what can happen once the rubber perishes is the fluid drains out, and then the mount no longer has its um, resistive and supportive capabilities. And I expect that that's what's happened in this case, and that's why the old one looks as uh, poorly as it does. So I want to get the new mount in quickly because that engine being supported by that jack is, uh, you know, dodgy. Don't want to leave it like that for too long. Uh, I'm going to put some anti-seize, by the way, uh, between the feet of the new engine mount and the uh, engine bay body. Uh, what that's going to do is just allow me to move the mount uh, once it's in position, even once there's a little bit of torque on it, it'll allow me to just slide it easily without, you know, without damaging the paint. So uh, once this is hooked over the threaded rods on the engine itself, it will uh, naturally situate itself in about the correct position. And then the uh, first priority is to get the engine side nuts on because once they're on, it will be relatively safe and we don't need to worry so much about that jack anymore. Now these uh, nuts are actually nylocks or uh, lock nuts, which in principle you are not supposed to reuse. In practice, it's, you know, it's kind of safe enough to reuse them once or twice. Um, uh, in any case, I'm going to uh, complement the uh, nylock itself with the use of a thread locker. In this case, I'm using Loctite 243, which is the blue one. And uh, hopefully that will stop my uh, engine mount nuts from uh, vibrating loose on me. And I'm also going to use thread locker on the uh, mount base bolts as well. Now, because our new mount is in better condition than the old one, um, it's uh, it's taller basically so I don't know if you can see if you can see those um, yeah see how much the uh, engine mount is removed from where it needs to be so basically we need to lift the engine up we need to jack it up that much basically so that we can get that contacted down so we just need to lift the engine mount about 10 mil more lift the engine itself sorry Come up here and look. These bolts. 
we know how to contact, so we can uh, screw these nuts all the way down. And uh, then I'll snug them up tight with the um, breaker bar. I'm not talking them at this point, just getting them tight so that everything is in position. Alright, so if we have a look at these bolts, we can see that they're not quite in the position that I mark with my pen. But the engine at this point is movable by hand. See, I can just move it like that, so I can hold it in the correct position while I um, while I tighten that bolt, which will hold it about where we want it. So I'm just going to pull the engine forward a little bit by hand while I uh, use the other hand to uh, torque that bolt down enough so that it grips it and holds it in place so I can get the other bolts in place as well and then torque them. And uh, this is one of the reasons I use that anti-seize because uh, now I can slide this around and um, if I didn't have the anti-seize, I'd be tearing the paint up, which would just be inviting rust for the future. Now I'm going to go back and torque these big ones. Now the uh, correct torque specification for these particular nuts is uh, 60 or to 65 foot-pounds. Um, I'm just putting that in imperial terms because it's kind of useful. It means that for every uh, foot of your bar or handle, you want to be applying 60 or 65 pounds of force, uh, which correlates back to about um, 30 kilograms of force. So if you don't have a torque wrench, which you should, uh, if you don't have one and you're not using one like me, then you can uh, estimate the force um, by that weight. And uh, for these other ones, for the bolt heads, which go on the base of the mount, it's about half that, it's about 35 foot pounds, uh, which in turn correlates to about 15 kilos uh, for each um, if, if, your, if your handle is, you know, 12 inches long. Okay, now once we're 100% sure that we've got all those bolts correct, we can start to lay our jack down. As we're doing this, we are putting weight on the mount. It's already loose, as you can see. Sits. Voila. And when we look back up top, we can see that everything looks good with this new mount now supporting the engine weight. So that's great. So finally, I just need to uh, re reinstall the um, coolant expansion tank. Um, I'm using some anti-seize on these bolts. It's just an OTT thing. It's just going to help slow down future corrosion. And uh, don't forget to replace the bolt in the uh, little bracket that holds that hose in position. And then uh, just nip them up tight uh, with a um, ratchet handle. Um, with the uh, feet of the expansion tank, of course, you're screwing down onto plastic. So do not over torque them or you're just going to damage the plastic. Now, of course, you've just been applying a lot of torque to the engine mount nuts, so uh, I could see how it might be easy to get carried away. Okay, so now I'm going to start the engine and test this mouse. I'm going to firstly see if there's no vibration now, which is my uh, primary objective here. And I'm also going to uh, chuck it into reverse and neutral and drive, and just uh, check the motion of the engine as we do that. Um, I have a camera here watching this, but you may need a, um, a uh, witness to help you and uh, we're just going to be making sure that the uh, motion is within the range of uh, what seems reasonable and that there's no uh, you know, clonking or obvious problems. So you see the engine shifts as we put it into gear. Um, that's because there's torque being applied to it um, from the uh, reaction from the gearbox. Um, so this is normal, but uh, it's just so long as there's not too much movement and this looks fine. And uh, what's even better news for me, in my case, is that that vibration has disappeared. So that is fantastic, because that's the first time in a while that I have had a vibration-free engine. So uh, it was this hydraulic mount that had failed, um, as I suspected. So that's great. Now we're going to do the uh, other side mount as well, even though it's actually there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, I have ordered one anyway, just because I want to keep them as a matched pair. So we will go ahead and do that next. So the left-hand mount is underneath the airbox. 
and it's um, actually a gearbox mount technically rather than an engine mount because uh, this is the side of the engine where the gearbox is installed. So to remove this air filter box we need to undo the little circlip thing hose clamp uh, which we do by inserting a uh, flat bladed screwdriver in the top of it and just twisting until it snaps undone and then remove the uh, air intake hose from the air box and then pull the air box up. It is actually mounted on top of the uh, transmission mount and it just pulls out where it has little rubber things, bungs that it plugs into and it simply lifts up and, and away. So go put that somewhere safe and then you will have easy unrestricted access to the uh, transmission mount. Now the um, these outside perimeter nuts are uh, 15 millimeters again so you'll be able to reuse the same socket that you used on the uh, base of the other side mount um, uh, but again you do need a deep socket for this because they are on a um, threaded rod and then this uh, big central nut um, which is the only thing lifting the weight in this case is a big 21 millimeter nut and this is going to be the most difficult of all of these bolts to undo so uh, in expectation of a fight with that 21 millimeter nylock, I'm going to uh, spray it with some penetrating oil, which uh, will help hopefully help us a bit. Okay, then we need to get under the car again, and uh, we are using our um, scissor jack once more, except this time we are putting it underneath the transmission and uh, lifting that up a similar amount to what we did on the other side. Okay, so with the uh, transmission side lifted with the jack, I'm just going to crack loose the nuts uh, much as I did on the other side. So those four 15mm nuts were predictably easy, but now for the big one. A 21mm deep socket and a decent breaker bar and good luck. A uh, heat gun applied to the uh, nuts for a uh, minute or so may be helpful. And eventually you'll get it like that. Now once everything is loose I'm going to remove the uh, outer nuts uh, first because they're the uh, quote safe ones. And I'll do the uh, middle one last. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that I'm uh, storing these nuts uh, in a pattern which emulates the uh, position in which they were installed. Uh, this is so that I can reuse the same nylocks on the same threads that they were um, in installed on before. Uh, I, I did that with the uh, bolts and nuts on the other side as well. That's just a uh, sort of best practice thing. And uh, before I remove the... Um, the uh, mount completely. I'm just going to mark again the position that it was on uh, just like I did with the other side. And uh, there is the 21 millimeter nylock. You can see how much uh, damage I've done to the, um, the faces of the nut. Um, that's how much force I had to use to get it off. But anyway, it's, um, it's not too badly damaged, so it should be reusable. And now the mount will lift off. Now you'll notice as I remove this, the engine uh, rocks forward an inch or so, which um, worried me a little bit at the time. It's fine, the jack uh, kept supporting it, but it just means that it's going to have to be manually pushed back that same inch uh, when we reinstall the new one. And here is the uh, old mount versus the new. Now the old mount does have perished rubber, uh, so it probably does want replacing, but uh, as I explained before, the um, vibration was uh, not coming from this one. So here goes the new mount and uh, I need to move the engine forward about an inch in order to get the threaded rod from the transmission to uh, fit uh, into the hole in the mount. And then I, I noticed that these nuts don't use any washers, so I'm just using a little anti-seize again just to allow me to torque these nuts up against the uh, metal without doing any too much damage to anything as they get torqued. That's to say anti-seize on the contact faces of the nuts, not the threads themselves. On the threads we're going to be using a thread locker again, quite the opposite. So yeah, Loctite uh, 243 in my case. Uh, firstly, on this big bolt, this is the, uh, the one that needs to be put on first because right now the uh, transmission is in danger of falling should the jack fail. Um, again, this is a nylock. Um, as with the other ones, um, it shouldn't be reused too many times, but this is the first time in my case that it is being reused. 
and Loctite will just make it all that much more secure. And then we can do the other four bolts. And then I will tighten those outside bolts and uh, make sure that the mount is in the same position that the old one was in before. And just wipe any excess thread locker off the threads. And now I'm going to tighten the main 21 millimeter nut. Uh, as I do that, I'm going to manually push the engine forward so that the threaded rod from the transmission is uh, central in the corresponding mount part. So uh, that looks good. Get it tight enough that it doesn't move. And then we can uh, stop worrying about the position of the engine and we can torque them. Now the outside bolts are uh, the same as the other 15 millimeter nuts on the other side, which is to say uh, 35 foot pound, uh, which is about 15 kilos of weight. And uh, because there's four of these bolts, I'm doing them in a sort of cross pattern, um, kind of similar to how you would uh, torque up uh, wheel nuts. And then lastly, the big 21 millimeter nut the torque spec for that is 98 foot-pounds, uh, which correlates to about 45 kilos of force um, for every foot length of handle. Okay. As before, this should now be um, safe to put the weight on it. So there we go, the second uh, mount um, correctly installed and uh, I will now start the engine and repeat the uh, same test that we did on the other side Just put it into reverse and neutral and drive and just check that uh, nothing moves strangely and that there are no vibrations So fine, that's all very smooth and uh, happy uh, by the way, the weird uh, moosing noise you could hear then was the uh, just the um, air intake being disconnected from the airbox. So nothing to worry about there. So uh, nothing remains now other than to reinstall that airbox, which is uh, easily done. You just push it down into the um, the rubber sockets on the uh, gear mount, the gearbox mount that you just replaced, and then reconnect the air intake hose and use a pair of long nose pliers to um, redo the hose clamp connector back up. So that is both of the mounts replaced. Time for a test drive. Now when we start the engine we have no vibration. And no vibration. So very good. Right, hope this was helpful for uh, somebody out there. Have fun. No vibration. Very good. <laughs>